What are we testing here? We're testing for when uh, if, the, if the machine comes in contact with a person, so this is replicating the lower part of the person. Okay. So then we have to use like right. your leg, Nick. <laughs> I don't think it's supposed to be a leg, it's supposed to be a person. Oh, I see. Right, so this is coming up. This test replicates what might happen if the bike hits a pedestrian. There must be no sharp edges sticking out from the bike's frame. What do you think? Nice and round. It's probably from wheel out. Next, those all important brakes. Perfect, that's a pass. But it's amazing. It's a fantastic start, but there's much more left to test. Your front tire fails. It's got no speed load or approval markings on it. All your wiring fails. If it's insecure, like with a chaff, could cause a fire. Your battery's insecure. Its valve fails. Your accelerator return spring is only temporarily held in place. If that fails, you've got nowhere slowing down. That's a failure. And your joining link and the chains are all the way around. That's a failure as well. Dick and Jim realise there's not much that gets past Harry Harrison. Lunchtime is approaching fast, so Dick and Jen get to work sorting out the long list of adjustments needed to make their bike street legal. Things are looking good, but they're not there yet. They've still got to make sure the bike is pollution free. Alright then, let's see how the and because the bike runs on fresh air, they're quietly confident it'll pass the emissions test. This was when we got the exhaust pipe. Yeah, we haven't got one of those now. Harry waves the probe in the vague direction of the non-existent exhaust pipe. for air-powered vehicles in the UK's Department of Transport rulebook. But there's no time to waste. Back in Bath, things are heating up in the kitchen. Dick and Jen will soon face their second test of the day. It may be street legal, but will their bike deliver the goods? The air-powered motorbike has passed the vehicle inspection test with flying colours. Now it's time for Dick and Jem to proudly reveal their new thoroughbred delivery vehicle to the expected new owners. There's a definite air of anticipation at Blackstone's. That's amazing! No pollution. Fantastic. How fast are we going? Probably downhills. Uh, I reckon about 25. On the flat, it sort of hovers around 15 and 18. It goes faster than the traffic in back. If we get some sandwiches, Brilliant, get tested. You better find out where we're going. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to stay around the bike. <laughs> Mr. B's bookshop first. Yeah, right, okay. I'm going to have one of these sandwiches, and a salad, and a soup. Take a wink. First delivery. Mr. B's bookshop on John Street. You remember? John Street's up around there. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. They're hungry. They're hungry. Okay, I'm going to And with that distinctive rattle, she's off. The first hurdle is the cobbles. Then Jen must navigate a quick route right through the heart of Bath's busy city centre. The cobbles are putting the structural integrity of the bike to a severe test. But Jem's extra strong brackets seem to be holding the air canisters securely in place. And while the stationary vehicles belch out fumes, the maneuverability of the clean air bike makes nipping through the traffic a breeze. Jem coasts up to the bookshop. Hey. Hey. Thanks for having me there. Thanks First drop completed successfully. The bike is clearly sturdy and powerful enough to handle short drops quickly. 
but can it be recharged rapidly enough to take on longer runs? Right, we should the sandwiches, but we haven't already done that. We should the vehicle. You ready for the long one? The next delivery is way more of a challenge. It's a three kilometer round trip, so the bike's air tanks must be filled to the max. Let us brought his mobile filling station down to Blackstones. It's a temporary measure for this trial run. You're not going to have this on your pavement, no. right? What's going to happen is you're going to have an electric compressor, green electricity, yeah. plus a bottle in your cellar, you know, keep that charged up, and then what we'll have coming to here is just the pipe to connect. It's all coming out the wall, huh? Yeah. Yeah, and it goes. Yeah. yeah. It takes just moments to transfer air from the large storage tanks into the bike's air bottles. It's incredibly quick compared to batteries on an electric vehicle, which can take hours to recharge. And the whole system can be emission-free if the electricity used to power the compressor comes from renewable sources, like solar or wind power. More sandwiches? Yes, please. The next drop is over one and a half kilometers away up some hills. A severe test of the bike's range and power. The two cylinders contain 18 litres of air compressed to 300 times atmospheric pressure. If that air was at normal atmospheric pressure, it would take up more space than an elephant. Although that sounds a lot, at full throttle, the air motor uses 7 litres per second. If Jim drives at full speed, the air would run out in just 13 minutes. So, Jim can't get carried away. More acceleration means less air, so he sensibly sticks to a city centre cruising speed of 16 kilometres an hour. Uphill, he has to sacrifice speed, because although the new big gearing cop gives him more torque, it doesn't spin so quickly. Nevertheless, he still gets to radio designs in under 10 minutes. Is this the Blackstone's delivery? Oh, there you go. No worries. See you very soon. Bye. More satisfied customers. But Jim still has to get back to base. And now there's just half a tank of air left. Fortunately, it's downhill most of the way, so Jim can turn off the motor and coast to save that precious air supply. Jim is looking like one happy delivery man. The mission has been a great success. The air bike has coped.